What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update. What happened to the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ? We're gonna talk about two trades, actually three trades that I personally made today. Two of them being, you know, me selling shares that I held from Friday and one being a quick little day trade in one of these high flying stocks that we saw today. And we're also gonna look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally think have value and good potential for the rest of this week. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and our entire uh, group, join that Discord group chat, guys. We have about 310 members in that Discord group chat talking on a day-to-day -day basis about stocks, trading, investing, news, strategies, and just networking with each other to push each other to the highest limit possible to become the best traders and investors possible. And again, all of those are linked down below. The Discord's down below and the links uh, in the description box. And join that if you guys want to. So what happened today in the overall stock market? Well, we saw the futures were up 500 points for the Dow Jones. I believe the S&P was up $50 and I believe the NASDAQ was up about $160 to $170 pretty much pre-market hours, right? And this is mostly due, pretty much all due to, you know, the, the trade war, the tariffs being halted for 90 days. And for those of you guys that are not familiar with what happened, pretty much Trump met with the president of China in Argentina at the G20, uh, G20 summit and they came to a resolution, well not really a resolution, they came to an agreement to halt the tariffs and keep them at 10% for the next 90 days. And for those of you guys that don't know, Trump was pretty much saying he wanted to take the tariffs to 25%. And this is pretty much a negotiation tactic, in my personal opinion, for you know Donald Trump and this whole tariffs situation. So the market today reacted very positively to this news of the tariffs being halted for the next 90 days and them staying at the 10% rate that they are at right now. So let's just take a look at the technicals here, guys. So in terms of the Dow Jones, guys, you know, the Dow Jones is holding above, it broke above, and now it's holding above this 180-day simple moving average on this 180-day chart. And for those of you guys that have been watching my videos for the past couple of days, you know, we were talking about how it was holding above the 50 simple moving average, pretty much it consolidated there, it bounced there, right? And now we saw the huge push-up, 500-point push-up, pre-market hours, the futures were up 500 points which ended up shooting it all the way up here to you know the point where it was above the 180 day simple moving average and at that point guys you know the Dow Jones is really overbought it was overextended here and we saw a little pullback honestly we closed the day up about 1.13% up nearly 300 points but you know for the for the latter half of the day we can see that we were pretty much falling right we we opened up here and then from this top point here you know we were up 500 points you know, we sold off pretty heavily, not really heavily, but there was a decent sell off from this point, you know, to the rest of the day. But we do notice that, you know, in terms of the technicals on this one day, one minute chart, we did end up closing on a very positive note, making higher highs and making higher lows. Because we notice here, we opened up nearly at 26,000. We sold off lower high, sold off lower high. We we found a low here at about 25,675 roughly, right? And then we pushed up 
pulled back, held a, a higher low from the previous, pushed up higher high, and you know that's pretty pretty uh, you know pretty good sign that we're reversing in terms of these technicals heading into the close of the market. So Dow Jones guys looking very good, holding above this 180 simple moving average, and we're closing off on a higher high, higher low pattern in terms of the one day, one minute chart, which could fend very well for tomorrow. It could play out very well for tomorrow, you know. But we do always have to keep an eye what's happening pre-market hours before we do you know decide what we're going to be trading for the day but in terms of the Dow Jones looking very very solid so SPX let's see what's going on here guys so the S&P is actually at a very interesting place right now. We're up $30, up 1%, pretty, pretty solid day. This one, just like the Dow Jones guys, it opened up higher, ended up selling off, you know, heading into the end of the uh, session. But what do we notice here? We notice that we're at a resistance point at the 180 day simple moving average right around $2,790, right around $2,800. And I was talking about this in yesterday's video and the previous video before that, that the S&P is going to have a resistance at this 180 SMA indicator first, with the next one being at about 2820 And that's exactly what's ending up happening. It's pretty much happening right now, right before our eyes. We can just see it here, guys. It's happening. So what we're gonna what we're gonna want to see in terms of the SP for it to get out of this, you know, downtrending channel. Well, pretty much it's slowly getting out of that downtrending channel. But what we want to see to to fully confirm it, well, we want to see a break out of this resistance point and that 180-day SMA resistance so a break out of here and ideally a break above about 2820 i think is going to be a very very good sign for the s p 500 and you know it's playing in this horizontal pattern that we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks you know the Dow Jones actually broke out of that horizontal pattern. Well, it's almost about to break out of that horizontal pattern. And, you know, they're both holding in that range between about, you know, 24,500 for the Dow Jones up to about 26,000. And the S&P, you know, right around 2650 up to about 2800. So until we see a break out of that upwards resistance, guys, this one is still trading in the horizontal pattern. Same thing with the Dow Jones. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly. Solid day today for the NASDAQ. We were able to break out of that 180 uh, SMA resistance. We were holding above it in the past couple of trading sessions, but now we officially popped up above it, which has been a resistance in the past here, 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 as well as here. So this is a very good sign that the NASDAQ is slowly reversing, getting out of this downward trending channel. So in terms of the NASDAQ, guys, this is the future. It's currently up $105, up about 1.5%. But let's just take a look at what it did during the session today on the 3rd of December. So we pretty much started out the day today. Let's see. Let's see where we started out today, guys. We started out today 9.30. Let's see where we are at about 9.30. So about 9.30, we opened up the market. This was actually trending up, right? And then we sold off from about 71.40 all the way down to about 70. Uh, 70 40 ish so from the peak we sold to about 70 40 at the close of the market so we did lose about 100 points but we were still up about 105 dollars from the close of the previous session on friday which again very very solid day for the nasdaq so let's talk about what trades i personally made today very quickly one was in hsy for those of you guys that don't know i was swing trading hershey the hershey company from Friday, I was in at about $108, I believe, and like 10 cents. And I ended up just selling my position this morning for about close to a 1% gain. This was a very, very small trade, guys. But again, you know, it was reaching the point of being overbought. It was right around here where I ended up selling. We can see the RSI is at about 70 here, which, you know, if it's closer to 70, that means the stock is becoming more overbought. If it's closer to the 30 range, that means it's oversold. And, you know, since it was close to the 70 range, close to that 110 resistance, I ended up just taking my profits of about 1% 
you know, at about 109, I forget exactly what price it was. I can show you guys here. It was at about like $109. I literally sold this very, very early on in the session. I was talking about this in the Discord group chat. A bunch of other people were trading ticker symbol HSY as well. And I was really comfortable with taking my profits there, guys. Again, due to it being close to that resistance at 110 and it being at an overbought level at, you know, on the 180 day four hour chart. So, Comfortable trade for me there on ticker symbol HSY. Another one that I ended up selling off today was Facebook. So Facebook is one that I'm in with the long-term investing portfolio. And I'm in this one. Well, I was in this one in my swing portfolio that I bought in on Friday. So this one as well as HSY were two stocks that I bought in on Friday. Swing traded them over the weekend. Both made me some decent money, right? Decent percentage, 1%. And I believe the Facebook trade was about 1, 1.5%, close to 2%, uh, you know, as well. So the reason why I sold the Facebook uh, position here was because we were getting rejected by this 180 day simple moving average. So we noticed Facebook popped up to about 145 pre-market hours today. And then from there, it was pretty much downhill in terms of Facebook stock. And I was in at about 138 roughly, I believe in terms of my swing position. And we can see exactly what I'm talking about here, guys. So we noticed 145 pre-market hours sold off pretty heavily back to 140 I didn't sell here we popped up and as I noticed we were getting rejected here by the 180 simple moving average I ended up selling right around here at about 142 like 50 ish so from about 138 let's say I was in at about 138.15 I believe to be exact with you guys but if we take a look back here on the 20 day I can show you let's say from 138 let's just see so I can show you guys how much percent I made from 138 up to about where was it that I sold again, guys? Oh my God, my short-term memory shot. From 138, let's say 138.84 up to about 142.50-ish, right? About 2.5% on this Facebook trade. So Facebook guys got me 2.5%, Hershey about 1%, giving me about 3.5% on the day. And another stock I was able to hop into today due to ridiculous volume and uh, ridiculous price volatility was CGC. And before I talk about CGC guys, this was a very, very quick, very quick swing trade, or not a swing trade, a very quick day trade. Um, you know, I wanna talk about what happened here today with Kron. So we saw a ridiculous move today with Kron, Kronos Group. For those of you guys that don't know, this is another marijuana stock. This is my whole marijuana stock, weed stock, uh, what, what's it called? Watch list right here. And pretty much, guys, whenever one weed stock goes up in price, a couple other ones tend to follow, right? So Kron today, uh, there was a news that came out. It was unconfirmed news that Altria... Uh, which is a big tobacco brand, big tobacco company. They manufacture, uh, they produce Marlboro cigarettes, I believe. They were in, in, uh, you know, in discussions of possibly purchasing Kronos Group, which is absolutely huge news in my personal opinion. And yet again, uh, this is not confirmed, guys. This is not confirmed, so this is not, you know, actually happening yet. But the fact that this news came out, this shot up the stock, and if this actually does happen this is going to be huge in my personal opinion for the uh, marijuana industry but let's just look at this article very quickly before i do hop into the trade i made today in cgc well Kronos Group led a mixed day for marijuana stocks after a report said tobacco giant Altria Group was in early discussions to buy the Canadian cannabis producer. A deal is not guaranteed, sources told Reuters. The news follows reports earlier this year that Altria had considered buying Afria, which is another marijuana stock. Uh, you know, last week, media outlets reported that Altria was considering taking a stake in the e-cigarette maker Juul. I'm sure a lot of people out there know what Juuls are. A bunch of the young kids nowadays have Juuls and, uh, you know, they're booming up too. So, you know, Altria is looking to make some pretty big purchases out here, guys. Check this out. So this could actually be a uh, pretty decent play outside of the cannabis, uh, you know, outside of the cannabis stocks. If you guys want to play, you know, 
Altria, ticker symbol MO, you know, this could be a very good opportunity for them. So the cannabis, tobacco, and alcohol industries have spent more time courting one over the another the past year. Both the alcohol and tobacco industries are looking at cannabis to gauge whether it can offset weaker sales in cigarettes and beer. And in my personal opinion, guys, the marijuana industry is going to be booming in five to 10 years. And I do think it can offset the weaker sales in cigarettes and beer. But again, this is unconfirmed news. This is not happening 100% quite yet. And there's a pretty good chance, guys, that this actually won't even happen. But the fact that they came out with this news, it shot the stock up in a matter of five minutes, guys. Literally, I was watching my watch list at about 11, what was it, like 12 o'clock, right? Yep, it was at about 11.50, actually. I was watching my watch list here, and literally a couple minutes later, it shot up like 30%, guys. Look at that. 30%. I was talking in the group chat today. I was going nuts. A bunch of people in, in there were talking about it. You know, crazy, crazy news. And then when this happened, when Cron shot up ridiculously like it did, you know, CGC followed. So CGC followed here, and I was able to actually play this one right around here, I believe. So I waited to see what Cron was going to do. It shot up, pulled back down, and then when Cron pulled back down, I think it was actually at about like 10 $10. It pulled back down a first time from here, right? From $11 down to about $10.30. It pulled back and then it started to push up. And when it started to push up here, CGC started to push up as well, right around the same time period, right? At about $12.10, $12.05. I ended up taking a little position here at about $34.30. And I just sold it off at about $35. Made a quick little 2% on this little hype around Kronos and the little and the marijuana industry today around noon in the stock market eastern standard time so two percent on cgc guys today one percent on hershey and about 2.5 percent on facebook giving me about a 5.5 percent day today on the 3rd of december in 2018 which i'm very very happy about because you know my goal is roughly around three to five percent per day in the stock market and the fact that i hit over my goal makes me very, very happy. So that is what I did today in the stock market, guys. That is what the overall markets are looking like. So let's just take a look at some other stocks, some other ETFs that I'm potentially looking at buying back into or adding money into. So buying back into, guys, I might even consider buying back into Hershey because the technicals on this stock are very good. It's making higher highs. It's making higher lows. You know, it pulled back from 110, bounced here. It pulled back, it pushed up, broke above the simple moving averages, broke above the EMA. And, you know, obviously I sold off because it was a little bit over, overbought, nearing that resistance point. But what I want to see before I even potentially add more money or, you know, buy back into HSY is I want to see a pullback, maybe back to around 107, 108. You know, this one could push up the 110, 111, 112. And if that does guys you know it's going to be a couple of days maybe a week or two before we do see that pullback but you know again i'm very patient guys i'm very very patient and i wait for opportunities to open up for me so you know if that does end up happening if we do pull back maybe back to around 107 106 you know ideally maybe like 106 105.75 you know i might add more money or buy back into Hershey as a longer term swing trade because the technicals guys they're textbook beautiful right here you know higher highs higher lows bouncing you know on the simple moving averages pushing up and you know it's looking very good guys it's looking very very good in my personal opinion so Hershey I'm watching Hershey very closely guys obviously the markets as of right now are out of their resistance points for the most part except for the S&P 500 and you know this is going to lead me to playing the uh you know TV not TVIX uh TQQQ as well as QQQ because these are two ETFs that go up in price when the overall markets are going up in price as well. And with this news that we have from the tariff situation, guys, them holding it for 90 days, keeping it at 10%, I do believe this is going to keep pushing up the stock market for a couple of days. Although, you know, this is just short term, uh, short term good news. It's going to push up the stock market for a couple of days, in my personal opinion. But, you know, this could end up up crashing not crashing but it could end up you know selling off once this 
hype once this uh you know once this good news ends up dying off because you know guys since they did halt the tariffs you know they didn't really come to a conclusion quite yet so there's still a bunch of uh you know negative factors there's still a bunch of uh just uncertainty around the stock market, even though they did come to this little 90 hold, uh, 90 day hold conclusion, there's still some long term, there's still some, you know, two, three month outlook of where we could end up selling off back into, you know, the, the, the you know, back into these uh, levels where the Dow Jones was down around here, you know, where the S&P was, you know, down around here, we could end up selling off back down there when the hype dies down. So what I'm telling you guys, what I'm telling you guys pretty much is that, you know, don't let this trick you into going long or on, on any swing trades, right? Don't let this trick you, uh, you know, to buy into some stocks for a couple of weeks thinking that this is going to continue to push up the market because they didn't really come to a conclusion, guys. There's still a bunch of negative things surrounding the overall markets right now. So just be very, very careful when you are trading. But, you know, the next week, two weeks, three weeks, Four weeks, maybe in the next month, month and a half, I do believe we could potentially be green in the stock market, right? So in that case, I'm going to be trading, you know, TQQQ as, as well as QQQ, which did very, very well today. You know, QQQ did very well, you know, up $3, up 2%, right? TQQ had a pretty solid day as well, up 5%, up 2.6%. You know, you guys is another one that I'm watching for tomorrow because if you guys have been paying attention today, we sold off pretty heavily, not very heavily, but a decent amount in terms of the natural gas futures. And we're seeing some green candlesticks start to form here, you know, in terms of the nat uh, the, of the natural gas futures, and if they are able to push back, you know, heading into the pre-market hours tomorrow and into the market, if they're able to push up, maybe back to around like in the 440s, mid 440s, I do believe this is going to be a good opportunity to hop into you gas. So. Pretty much, guys, what am I watching for tomorrow? It's very simple. I, I trade the same couple of stocks and ETFs every single day, pretty much all the time, right? So tomorrow, I'm going to be watching you guys due to this big pullback in natural gas. I'm going to be watching the uh, bull ETFs in terms of the overall market uh, TQQQ as well as QQQ looking to possibly re-enter into Hershey ticker symbol HSY although that one may take a couple of weeks to come back to the range where I would want to buy back in I'm still going to be watching that one very closely as well as you know these wheat stocks, they're always going to be on my mind, guys, because they always end up pushing up when they're, well, not really always, but this le the levels that they are at right now, they tend to do very well at. So I'm waiting for that, you know, that I'm waiting for that push in CGC. Obviously, we saw Cron push up heavily today. I'm not really looking to play that one, to be completely honest with you guys. But, you know, for the most part, uh, CGC and NBEV, I'm going to be watching very closely because NBEV right now holding above the 180 SMA here on the 180-day chart. It has a margin up to about $6, $6. So from 5 to 6, I think it's very possible for it to run. And, you know, that's 15%. So, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it, found some value in it. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys traded today. Let me know how you all did. I would love to love to know. And, and remember, guys, always do your own research when trading, when investing. Do not buy or sell based off of my opinion or anybody else's out there because that's not how you're going to become a self-sufficient trader, investor over the long term. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.